Welcome to the Asia Society. My name is La Francis Wei. I am the film curator here. Uh, really excited to open the film series Homecoming Myanmar, a Mid-AZ retrospective that is sponsored by the Taipei Cultural Center in New York. Uh, this is, as some of you might know, part of um, Asia Society's major season of programming on Myanmar, which also includes an exhibition. Um, it's upstairs second and third floor um, that is entitled Buddhist Art of Myanmar. And next month, we are gonna have like a major, fabulous 18 member dance and music troupe called Shui Man Tapin Zap Wei. So those of you who know this form will already feel very excited. If you don't know, you just have to come. <laughs> and, um, we also will have uh, some discussions that will um, examine the changing political landscape of Myanmar. Um, so these are really urgent and uh, critical dialogue that um, we will have here on our stage. Please check out our website and find out more about us. I also just want to let you know that we also run an ongoing Korean movie night series, which is a Korean film pretty much every other week. So you should um, come and join me. Um, I feel extremely excited to introduce Midi Z to you guys. Um, he's a really talented young filmmaker who is uh, born and raised in Myanmar. And um, he's currently based in Taiwan, but he has just set up an office in Yangon, the former capital of Myanmar. Um, it speaks a great deal about this age of globalization we live in, um, when it's really common for a person to uh, be associated with multiple countries, cultures, and identities. Um, Myanmar is in fact a very diverse country, if you are not aware. It um, has over 130 officially recognized ethnic groups. Um, Midi's films give us an opportunity to look at the Chinese community um, in the region where he is from, in the eastern Shan state, um, next door to China, Thailand, and Laos. They also offer us glimpses into life in Myanmar as the country is going through drastic changes. Um, but above all else, Midi's films are look at the universal plight of people who struggle with poverty and um, few choices. I'll just tell you a little bit about his background. Uh, Midi Zi's grandfather is originally from Nanjing, China, and uh, he moved to the Yunnan province, which is um, in the southwest part of China next to Myanmar, to build the Burma Road um, that connects the two countries. Um, during the British colonial time. During the Civil War of the late 40s, his grandfather fled to, China, uh, to Myanmar from China and settled in Lashio. Um, actually, at that point, the country was called Burma. Um, the name officially changed to Myanmar in 1989. The family has been there for over six decades. You will soon see that Lashio, where Midi is from, is... Um, quite remote where people um, really struggle for subsistence there. Many go away to work in other countries and a lot of them go away illegally. When Midi was 16 years old, he passed an exam organized by the Taiwanese government and received a scholarship to study, to attend high school in Taiwan. Um, yesterday, when I met him, he gave me this nice book which just got published in Taiwan in January, it's in Chinese, unfortunately. Um, I almost finished it. Uh, the book of interviews chronicles um, the making of Ice Poison, which involved a seven person production crew, 10 days of shoot, and just about 30,000 US dollars. So if you're a filmmaker, think about your strategy. Uh, <laughs> The book also um, includes a lot of his personal stories and reflections. And I'm just gonna read you two quotes from the book that I kind of loosely translated. 
When I was little, I studied very hard and did well in school. I didn't do so for the praises. Instead, I wanted to be able to go to the teacher boldly and ask for an extension to pay my tuition, which could give my parents more time. Living under a totalitarian regime, money determines a person's fate. As long as your family is wealthy and connected to the military, an education is not necessary to earn respect. Apart from the minority elite, the people who risk their lives to deal drugs, and those who are lucky to have found jade in mines, most people are very poor. Since the 80s and 90s, it's been trendy to go overseas to work to improve livelihood. Many neighbor siblings who had gone to Taiwan wrote letters to say they were living a good life. They were also able to send money home to help their families. Therefore, for me, I didn't care which school I attended in Taiwan. The key was to leave the impoverished Myanmar and to make money overseas. I started working on the second day of school. And Midi has worked as a construction worker and also a restaurant chef. And he also told me that in Taiwan, you are required to get a certificate to become a chef in a restaurant. And he is a certified grade C chef <laughs> in a scale of like A, B, and C. <laughs> but he has other talents, obviously. Um, I want to thank Midi Z and his leading lady, Wu Keshi, for attending the screenings tonight and tomorrow. It's a really long journey for them to come here. Um, Koshi has acted in two features and four short films by Midi Z, and they have developed a really solid partnership, and I'm expecting this partnership to grow. Um, these two people have a lot of stories to tell, and um, I'm sure we're going to have two really enlightening discussions. I want to take this opportunity to thank the Taipei Cultural Center in New York and also the Ministry of Culture of Taiwan for their support. This series is not possible at all without them. I want to especially acknowledge Susan Yu in the back and Amber Wu, I don't know where she is. She's working upstairs um, for their help and enthusiasm. Um, I talked to them about a year ago that I wanted to do this series and they just basically jumped immediately and said, we are on board. And um, they really share with me the belief in the work of the director and the actress. And you're going to find out very soon, and we cannot wait to introduce them to you. But last, not the least, I want to thank my intern, Hui Ying Chen, who's somewhere in the back. Um, she's done everything for me, <laughs> just to make me look good. <laughs> um, now, please join me in welcome Midi Zi and Wu Keshi. Uh, good evening, everyone. Actually, La already finished, you know, the story that I want to tell you <laughs> completely. <laughs> so it's fine. And and so come back to the film Ice Poison. Uh, okay, this film, actually, now I almost forget, you know, what this is about. Because mostly when I finish a film, yeah, when I finish the editing, mostly forget because almost thinking next step, what I should to do and what I should to improve, uh, to break, yeah, you know, to to improve or to make a leap to another way uh, for filmmaking. So I think just let the film tell you more. Yeah, I will stop my introduction of the film. Yeah, let the film tell you more. And good evening, everyone. I'm actress Wu Keshi. And like director, Mi, uh, director Midizi, I will never forget the story. <laughs> it's a very exciting, full of dangerous and uh, unexpected shooting experience for me because we have no script and under I have no license of shooting. So it's like, and for me, it's like you know, take the time machine back to the 50s, and so. 
and we do have lots of stories behind the films. And it's very honor for me to share the experience, the film, and the story behind the films. I hope you all enjoy the night. Thank you for coming. Midi and uh, Kashi, thanks for coming. Um, I think that since we have the star here, we should uh, begin our conversation um, on the cast. Um, many actors in this film, they look like documentary subjects. They look like people who are just living their own life. Um, can you talk about who they are and how you found them? And then Kashi can actually explain yourself. Okay. <laughs> She always appears as a mysterious woman when she comes to Q&As. Okay. Actually, uh, the, main, the main actor, Xing Hong, actually, uh, he is my line producer since when I was in my university, since my graduation work short film, and since my first feature film, because we were just like a three crew and uh, we didn't have money you know, to hire <laughs> cast that time. So the line producer needed to be the main actor till now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually, Xing Hong, he doesn't want to be an actor. So now uh, we may have, we already have money <laughs> to hire another cast. So now Xing Hong is going to Rangong to be a real uh, line producer as he wants. <laughs> mm -hmm. What about the other? The others, like the father of the creator, uh, actually, mostly he's the real farmer living in the remote uh, region in the forest. Yes. And uh, the another guy who runs the oil factory, uh, the Xing Hong's, the main character relatives. Actually, he is Xing Hong, real brother, or re, not brother, Your father, 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 father. Okay, and uh, okay. Mostly, most of the the character, they are non professional. Yeah, with the exception of Ke Xi and Xing Hong. Yes, hmm. and most of them actually, uh, every dialogue in the film, in the story, it belongs to their real experience, life experience, so it's not difficult for them to perform. Uh, for them, they just needed to be there. Yeah, it's all, it's all. They don't need to act. Like the father, the story he told actually is he, him's a real story. But of course, the film is not a documentary. Yeah, most of all of the things, the dialogue is uh, written by me, is set it up. Yes, it's not like uh, improvisation dialogue. Yeah, it's written by me. But the the actor, they didn't know before uh, shooting. <laughs> um. Just so over a year ago, I actually watched this film the first time in Berlin at the film festival. Mm -hmm. And I was just completely surprised when Koji went up to the stage to do the Q&A because I expected like another non-professional who might be someone from the countryside, from <laughs> Myanmar. And then you look at this. <laughs> so who are you? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Well, um, um, I'm pure Taiwanese, and before meeting director Midi Z, I was doing stage performances and also a dancer. So after meeting him, I started to, uh, uh, at first, we collaborated several shorts. But that time, he still writes scripts about Taiwanese, so I played Taiwanese that time. But after the uh, election of Burma, uh, back in 2011, 11. and he told me he had plans to shoot in Burma and asked me if I would uh, like to uh, start to learn their languages and maybe we can really shoot there secretly. So I just uh, started to learn my uh, the dialogue in the film, uh, which is uh, Yunnan, uh, or mix a little bit Burmese dialect and in Taiwan. That time I haven't been to Burma at all. 
And so I just started to learn the languages two years ago before the shooting and prepare for, to build the character and everything. Yeah, so. How did you learn the language? <laughs> <laughs> just by listening, yeah, uh, from them and uh, just uh, practice by myself. Yeah, actually, before Ice Boys and Kershi did work uh, as the main actor in Poor Folk, mm -hmm. yeah, my right. second feature at that time, uh, Kershi was sent to the border, the rear border, living with the local people. Yeah, I just told the people, okay, uh, the girl actually, she's not Taiwanese, she's the local people, but she got chance now, he's, uh, she's living in Taiwan. So she just come back to live here to find someone if some little girl want to work in Taiwan. You know, like pre pretend as the local. And uh, after three months, most of the people living at the village come to ask Kershi if Kershi could, you know, give their daughter or family job <laughs> opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> um. There's a Myanmar community in Taiwan, mm. and you also spend some time with them. Yeah, uh, between uh, shooting poor folk and ice poison, I uh, uh, was I uh, did part time jobs in. Uh, there's a street called uh, Hua Xin Street, mm -hmm. which are a lot of Chinese Burmese people living in in that street in Taipei in Taipei County. And so I just, uh, the director helped me to find a restaurant and I, oh, I play, I play, I pretend I was one of them and just uh, uh, doing jobs in the restaurant, washing dishes and you know, <laughs> doing <laughs> things like that, yeah. Um, I'm wondering how it's like working with the non-professionals. You mentioned that they were just playing themselves, but uh, you also have to interact with them in yeah. specific scenes. So how do the two parties come together? Yeah, with uh, the uh, non-professionals. First, I, uh, I really spend lots of time with them, so make them to uh, get used to me. And so when, the sh uh, when we start to shoot, and they will not be scared of me. And yeah, and then the others, the director will guide us to, to, to perform together, yeah. Mm. And the director said they were just basically improvising, they were just telling their life stories, and so how did you improvise with them? Uh, well, uh, I know my character. I know which scenes, my goal, what's my goal. And so I just, uh, I just improvise with them. Yeah, using the techniques I learned from the stage thing, I think, yeah. Can you give one example, like one scene, how it worked? Uh, oh, like the scene I worked with my mother, I, uh, I was doing the corn. Yes. Uh, I think director Midi Z has really good uh, taste. Uh, can I say taste? Okay, <laughs> on, on, picking up the on cast, uh -huh. because my mother, uh, when we were there and, then she, and we will visit lots of uh, neighbors of his or uh, people who live there and the mother, he, she was very like with lots of emotion and she can, she's really a good, good actor with, with natural gift. And so, uh, and one thing is that she, her daughter was really fooled and taken away by some uh, human uh, traffickers, and mm -hmm. so her daughter is really like married a uh, farmer in China, and uh, so that's, so this thing really happens. So she, uh, when we, in, in, uh, when we act, and then sometimes I look at her, and then she gives me lots of like moving, moving uh, emotions, and I cried, and then she will cry with me. So I think I have really like, so we really like work well. Um, Midi, I, in, during the introduction, I talked a little bit about your background. Uh, the stories in the film, such as people getting involved in drugs and also uh, women being kidnapped, those are real stories. When you are thinking about how to put this film together, how do you incorporate these real stories and events into the film? 
mostly like okay most of the things or the storyline happen uh, in the film Ice Boys and for me it's quite familiar or quite common quite simple because every day is happen when I return back to my hometown my relatives my friends yeah, they came to me er everyone they have their own story and most of the story almost the same people struggling to make living to be alive and uh, for example most of my classmates in my junior high school like 10 of them was put in jail because of selling ice poison ice poison is uh, uh, direct translate in chinese being to in english actually is called maybe crystal meth crystal meth or uh, uh, meth and amphetamine and uh, most of my neighborhood when I was like 10 years old, my neighborhood, the girls, yeah, most of them, they were trying to, to find job in China and um, many of them, they, they were cheated you know, by someone to marry you know, some farmers in China. So such kind of story, so common for me. Every time when I listen, I heard a lot. So I, I felt, okay, I want to make those real things into us into a film and then of course because of the limitation at the beginning actually I, I, I wrote the story very dramatic very very complex but during the shooting most of the element could be like uh, cuts because of the limitation like Ice Boys and we just have 10 days shooting we just have seven crew and we don't have a lot of budget. So we just shoot the film depends on the real situation, depends on the real character experience, life experience. If not, we couldn't shoot the film like so quickly. And of course, for me, such kind of shooting seems to be very improvisation, but actually is very precise. Mm. Like at the beginning, I just calculate, okay, the film, which thing is the most important things? I may take, I might take a lot of time just only for those things, like the things in the bus. That's really happening things. Those uh, motorcycle driver, they come from the countryside. Most of them, they are farmers. They come to the city to find jobs to pursue more be better life, want to change their living, and they are asking for jobs. That's very reason. Those things uh, is took like five days just for the only things. Yeah, we we go there, record the thing every day. We put our real actor combined with the real non-professional actor and the real things happening in the real life, but we record them into the story. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about the bus station mm -hmm. because it's a really fascinating scene, and you can tell that it's shot from a high angle, and you mentioned earlier that uh, the film was shot without permission. Um, it's, it, it, it's not a set, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's something that's unfolding in real life. How can you tell us how it worked? The whole, I mean, how did you shoot that? Okay, at the beginning, I I just wrote the structure of the story very roughly, because, as I told you, because of the limit, we have no times, no permit for shooting. Because in Burma, if you want to shoot a film, even though a video or an advertising, you need to apply and bar meat for shooting. Uh, if without bar meat, yeah, you will be maybe arrested by the police, uh, very sensitive. And for this thing, uh, I decided, okay, because the story is about, yeah, a farmer want to find a job or want to be a motorcycle driver in the city. So we went to the city to find our things. And the things in the bus station is very important because the bus station is the most crowded place and most complicated place in my hometown because my hometown is located in Lasho. It's a border city. 
connected to China and from China to to the Mandalay, like the Midwest Burma, Lashio is the the necessary place. Yeah, the passenger needed to pass. So the bus station, I found the bus station. We decided, okay, we want to uh, record something at the bus bus station. So first, we we want to find a place uh, which could heat hide our camera. Because so we rent uh, like uh, the uh, uh, room, very top view uh, of our restaurant. So we went there every day, just record the thing, just put our uh, actor in those things and react with the real people. And after that, we realized that sometimes, you know, when we record the, the landscape, the camera moving, Someone they may hide the camera because they don't realize we are filming. So it's not it's not easy to make things to record things very precise. So second day we decided okay we needed to talk with the real people to tell them okay now we, we are filming so we will give you money so you needed to say something to the actor okay you you needed to fix that to the actor. So like so we put like uh, put into uh, we hire at least like eight real motorcycle driver or taxi driver to react with real actor. Yes, second day, and then that day we record because we just go there every morning from the four a.m. and record the real things happen till. A night, and then we go to another place to shoot, and then we come back like 4 p.m. record till night every day. We continue to record the things, and the final day, uh, someone maybe realized we are filming the very sensitive thing, so they call the police. The police come. Oh, what you are doing? And do you have the bar meat? We just pretend. Okay, we are just like t- tourists now. Those foreigners, they are very, because I could speak Burmese, I, I told them those foreigners, they are professional. Now we are, our country is going to be changed. They, they are invited to be here to teach the younger Burmese filmmaker to make tourism and advertising for our country like that. Yeah. So, yeah, so we solved the problem and they have <laughs> us yeah, shoot the film very fluently. Uh-huh. Yes. And the reason, and the reason we got caught because that day there are lots of buses coming, and so we have lots of chances to to do we do it again. You know, uh, from the beginning, I have to uh, find a empty car, empty bus, and pre- and and secretly uh, sneak into a, the bus, pretended I forgot something in the bus, and then I just uh, say to my microphone, say, okay. Uh, uh, I'll begin uh, to act. Oh, action. Yeah. Action. <laughs> I, I, I action myself. Yeah, I action myself. And then I just pretend I was tired and then I got off the bus and then the bus driver, the main actor, should catch me and to ask me if I want to join uh, to, to take his motorcycle. And so we, 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 can de- uh, we did it like uh, more than 10 times. And there is a very smart Burmese and uh, he, he's a driver and he wanted me to. Uh, to, to, to take his motorcycle, but I refused him because I can only promise the, the main actor. <laughs> <laughs> so he was, he was like, then, okay, he was like, the first time, okay, the lady re- reject me, and then he was like, didn't I see her again? <laughs> what? And she was like, the girl was like, you know, going back and forth, and then she was like, and she was, she saw me, uh, kept uh, seeing the beckoning because I was like, we were like, uh, after every shooting, we will secretly, you know, wanted to know if the director standing on the balcony would say, okay, yes, this take is okay. So she, he was like, okay, she's looking at that, and then and she's also looking at the main actor. And so she saw the triangle, you know, we wow. were like, <laughs> and the next thing is like the police came, yeah. Wow. Um, I was reading this book, I was telling you about it. Um, I was actually traumatized by these stories that are told in the book. Um, they happen in real life, and it seems like to me that real life 
is so filled with drama. I mean, there are drugs, a lot of violence, women are kidnapped a lot, and uh, many of your family and friends have experienced violent attacks, including yourself. You were stabbed <laughs> kind of randomly, not so randomly. Yes. Um, and several of your family members uh, died of illnesses rather suddenly. Uh, a lot of really dramatic stories that we don't normally have to encounter so much, so so many times, and so so many of them. Why did you choose to keep drama off the screen in this film, and also use long takes and a lot of them very static um, to portray life here? I think like. Okay, I think the long shot style, uh, the such kind of cinematographer language, actually for me is just very appearance of the film. It's just one way to tell that story. For me, I don't think you know such kind of uh, cinematographer language is very uh, like I will use it forever. No, I think depends on the limitation. The long shots could be used to help the storytelling, because the film for me is more about okay the people they are waiting. So waiting timing is very important in the film. So like they are waiting for the phone call from China, they are waiting for someone, they are waiting for changing. Such kind of cinematographer language is help very helpful for those timing for those. Thing. And another thing is why to use it. I told you is about limits. Yeah. So it's very interesting. Sometimes the art creation work become because of the limitation. And limitation is one kind of creation uh, skill or technique. So it's very, very conflict sometimes. So. I want to say is uh, I don't think such kind of cinematographer language, long short or very poetic, is the most suitable things for cinema. But it's the most suitable way for this film shooting because of the limitation. Because of I want to record the timing, the waiting. Yes. When you uh, look at uh, the the. The fate of the characters. Do you feel like you could really have been one of them? Yes, yes. Even though till now, sometimes you know, when I memorize to my previous, not my previous life, like <laughs> uh, my childhood life, it seems to be very surrealist. Yeah, it's like a dream compared to. Compared to prison life, yeah. Now I'm just uh, 33 years old. I spent half life, okay, 16 years in Burma, 16 years in in Taiwan. But it's very different. So when first time when I uh, arrived in Taiwan, I realized I it looks like I jump, you know, into 40 years. So now I'm just. Uh, 33 years old, but my 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 childhood experience is very similar to someone who is 80 years old. Yes. So when I I'm writing the script, I realize okay, those character actually I could be one of them if I was not uh, chosen, maybe by the God or by the by the. By the god of the film of the uh, art, maybe yeah, maybe might be I might be one of the ten, and I I have to say yeah I I was lucky I was lucky. Well, we're going to take some questions from the audience. Uh, right here first, the handsome man. <laughs> so, um, uh, please use the mic. Thank you. Um, so I'm curious, when you're making this film, who did you imagine your audience was going to be? Did you think it would be people who go to global film festivals, Taiwanese people, 
do, does that even matter to you? And um, I'm curious, did this show in Myanmar and did it show in China, mainland mm. China? Mm. Yeah, the film did sh show in, in China in some film festival, of course released in Taiwan and haven't shown in Burma, yeah, in Myanmar, yeah, because of the, the, uh, the permit, yeah, for release, yeah, the film now, <laughs> yeah, haven't get the uh, permit, yeah. And for the audience, actually, to be honestly, I, I haven't thought about that, yeah. As a filmmaker, I'm not, I'm still a filmmaker who is still studying how to make a film, like a student. I, I couldn't dream like, okay, I could make a film for the worldwide audience. It's not like this. It's filmmaking for me till now, it just like, okay, I have emotion or I have story want to share, want to express, that's all. So I make the films. And I don't know yeah, who will be the audience, but I believe every kind of art has their common uh, value for the human being. Yeah. If I, I'm good enough in filmmaking or for, I'm good enough in telling story, maybe yeah, all of the audience yeah, in the world what could be film's audience. But now, yeah, I, I don't dare to imagine yeah, I, I will make film for the U.S. audience or yeah, for the world audience. And for the film festival, for us, it's like a, like a place which exam or test if I could be a filmmaker. It's all. Yes, I think it's all. Maybe, of course, from a film festival, it could help us to be known by audience or by some professional industry people. Yes. But for me, filmmaking till now is very personal yeah, way to express what I want to tell, what I want to share. Maybe no audience want to listen or want to hear the story, hear the story, maybe. Yeah. But for me, it's enough. When I film, finish the, sto uh, the, the story, tell the story, yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah. Because filmmaking till now is like a person uh, writing diary. When you're full of story want to tell, you may feel nervous if you couldn't have way to express. I, you might feel like uh, couldn't sleep. Yeah. When you write the script, when you make the film appear, yeah, you may feel, okay, relax, okay, next step, I will tell another story. There's one over there. Yes. There seems to be a disconnect between the last sequence of the film, the slaughter of the cattle, and the rest of the film. Could you kindly comment on that? You mean the last thing? Yeah, the okay. cow. Oh, okay, every time I want to uh, say one thing is no cows, you know, uh, was killed because of the film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be because, yeah, like in my hometown or in Burma, every night, every midnight, I don't know why, they, they killed, they slaughtered the cows at the midnight. Hmm. Yes. And we record the scene at the slaughter house, hmm. and uh, we, just, we just went there, record the scene, like documentary. Yeah, yeah it's all. The scene for me is very important. One thing, one point is the scene is connected to the story. Because they, yeah, they, 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 they use their cow to exchange the motorcycle. And the cow in the film is not just a cow, it's like their family member. So, and it's also uh, represent their very valuable thing. Yes. They want to pursue life, they hope, want to change. So they sold their cow. But finally, of course, yeah, it's tragedy. They couldn't pay uh, back for the cow. Yeah, so, of course, for the storyline, the cow needed to be killed. Yeah, that's the story. Very rational, logical. Uh, another thing is for me, like, 
under the globalization, every country, every not even only Burma, America, Taiwan, South America, yet we have one problem is like everyone, like as farmer, especially the farmer, the lower class people, yeah, all of us, we want to move to the city, we want to, you know, change our job to the city, but maybe the globalization not suitable to everyone. Yes, yeah, that's one thing uh, for the last thing for me, yes. One question here. Um, first, first of all, thank you. Um, I, was, I actually was in La Chio about five years ago, and I just wanted to say how impressed I was with the way you communicated the very, uh, how should I say, unhurried, laid back quality of the town. Um, mm -hmm. it, uh, it, I really, it really is like that. And I, I just really, really appreciate it. The other thing is, I was just wondering, I mean, certainly the, the Burmese authorities know by now that you made this film without a permit. So what happens if you go back to Burma, are you worried about uh, being arrested? <laughs> yeah, no worry about it. Because uh, uh, Burma now is changing. Yeah. And as you, as you see, the film is, not, is nothing one to like uh, against the authority. It's very realistic story. And it's art creation work. And for the government, I think, it's nothing for them. Of course, the film, last year, the film got very, like, uh, concentration from the media. It represents Taiwan as the, like, uh, Oscar Academy. campaign. Yeah. And uh, I got some email from, not authority, from some, someone they are yeah, working for the film industry. Uh, they also, they also told me I couldn't, I needed to be careful if I go back. Actually, nothing happened. I, I go back recently, yeah, yeah, quite often. And I think for the, for the authority, it's just art work. Or another point, I think I'm nothing. I'm not so, you know, <laughs> big, big as a not could against the authority, I think, yes. We have uh, one last question over there, and we continue the discussion in the reception. <laughs> it is. So uh, my question to you is about uh, identity issues, and I think that you grew up in Myanmar and spent most of your adult life in Taiwan. I just wonder whether or not you feel this sense of in-betweenness, that uh, you're not quite Taiwanese and not quite... Burmese, and would or not that actually offer you a fresh perspective to actually go back to your hometown to create a film such as this one? Uh, and there's a very quick personal question. Which language do you dream in? <laughs> so I'm trying my best to thinking about English. <laughs> 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 and yeah, like at the beginning, my mother language is Burmese. Yeah, and and then when I arrive in Taiwan, yeah, my my most my best language is Mandarin. It's Chinese. I write in Chinese, read in Chinese. And for the for the for the things very conflict, and like okay, I think it's very strange. Like. I now, you know, I spent 17 years, yeah, longer than time in Burma, in Taiwan. But till now, I still could remember every detail happening in my, you know, 16 years in Burma. I don't know why. Maybe more dramatic, more different compared my prison life, I think. That's why I make films, most of my films, almost my films, made in Burma, and that's one way to share or to express those memories, because you couldn't forget. Yeah, sometimes if you don't make film, if you don't write it on the diary, if you don't express it, you will, feel, you will, you will get mental illness, I think. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. 
that's very inflict. I think someone you may have such kind of a feeling. You come from yeah, you come from Taiwan. Now you are staying in America. You got the diversity yeah, influence you. You yeah, culture influence you. Sometimes you feel conflict. Okay, who I am, where I come from. But finally, you may uh, realize some things. You know, like the soil, the land. You know, they influence you. That you you are affected by most of the detail. Yeah, like Taiwan. Like now, the way of my speaking or my thinking is Taiwanese, totally Taiwanese. But the way of my uh, filmmaking, I made film, is totally Burmese, very very. Like very wide, like as a yeah. Some critics they they criticize like okay, my film is like a, a white horse, yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> white horse couldn't or lion, yeah, or lion. Wild li- horse, yes, wild yes. Horse. Like couldn't be. Tame. There is no law, there is no re- regulation. Yeah, I think those kind of uh, personality is belongs to Burma. Was educated by Burma because in those. Uh, circumstance in those environment, you you needed to be brave to be survival. Yeah, but in in Taiwan, you needed to be very elegant. You know, very <laughs> educated because yeah, we are safety, we are democratic. Yeah, you can uh, talk to the people very elegant way. But in Burma, you couldn't. Yeah, not people, especially for the authority. Yeah, you needed to be very you know full of courage to fight. To to speak up, yeah, your your thought. Yeah, yeah. when he, when director was in, once he uh, stepped into Burma, he, he totally changed to another person with beard <laughs> and uh, you know wear the long skirt and then uh, talk like the how to say that gangsters. <laughs> uh, wait, yeah, like gangster because we have encountered many times that the soldiers or the police came to ask what we were doing, and uh, it's all him to. Uh, make excuses and to uh, solve the problems, yeah. And he, you know, do the beetle nuts or like the, the way he, he's a real actor. <laughs> so the question actually is very difficult to uh, answer. But I think someone uh, like me, yeah, I couldn't be separated uh, by nationality or language or uh, you know whatever, because you couldn't be separated. You are combined. Yeah, like now, yeah, I'm speaking in English. Yeah, my thought may be influenced by some Western thinking. Yeah, yes, because the way of you using, you know, the language, the thinking, or filming. Yes, yeah. So it's very difficult to be separated. Someone is it your, your you are you from Hong Kong or your personality totally Hong Kong or America or yeah. Very difficult. So, our esteemed guest, you are going to choose which one of those people <laughs> ask questions to give this to. <laughs> yeah, now it's the most difficult choice. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's you. No, uh, no. Because so you are going to choose. <laughs> uh, or who? All right, let's okay, give it think, to the, the gentleman the who went to last year. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Midi and Katie. <laughs>